simple, plain Clarence. I do love thee so that I will shortly send thy soul to heaven. If heaven will take the present at our hands. But who comes here? The new delivered Hastings. Good time of day unto my gracious lord. Much unto my good lord Chamberlain. <laughs> Well, are you welcome to the open air? <laughs> How hath your lordship brooked imprisonment? Oh, with patience, noble lord, as prisoners must. <laughs> but I shall leave my lord to give them thanks that were the cause of my imprisonment. No doubt, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And so shall Clarence, too. For they that were your enemies are his and have prevailed as much on him as you. More pity that the eagle should be mewed while kites and buzzards play at liberty. Uh, what news abroad? No news abroad so bad as this at home. The king is sickly, weak, and melancholy, and his physicians fear him mightily. Now, by St. Paul, this news is bad indeed. Oh, he hath kept an evil diet long, and overmuch consumed his royal person. Tis very grievous to be thought upon. What, is he in his bed? He is. Go you before him, I will follow you. He cannot live. I hope and must not die till George be packed with post-horse up to heaven, I'll in to urge his hatred more to Clarence. Which done, God take King Edward to his mercy and leave the world for me to bustle in. For then, I'll marry Warwick's eldest daughter, the Lady Anne, whom I but lately widowed at Tewkesbury Field by slaughter of her husband, young Edward, who was heir to Lancaster. And now I hear she doth attend the course of Lancaster himself, who's gone to heaven. For I myself did also haste him thence. What though I killed her husband and his father? The readiest way to make the wench amends is to become her husband and her father, the which will I, not all so much for love, as for another secret close intent by marrying her which I must reach unto. But yet I run before my horse to market. Clarence still breathes, Edward still lives and reigns. When they are gone, then must I count my gains. So, for hither Warwick's daughter comes. Step down, your honourable lord, if honour may be shrouded in a hearse. Whilst I awhile obsequiously lament the untimely fall of virtuous Lancaster. Poor, he cold figure of a holy king. Pale ashes of the house of Lancaster, thou bloodless remnant of that royal blood. Be it lawful that I invocate thy ghost to hear the lamentations of poor Anne, wife to thy Edward, to thy slaughtered son, stabbed by the selfsame hand that made these home. Oh, cursed be the hand that made these fatal holes. Cursed be the heart that had the heart to do it. Cursed the blood that let this blood from hence. If ever he have child, abort it be it. If ever he have wife, let her be made as miserable by the life of him as I am by my young lord's death. And thee. Come. Now towards Chertsey with your holy load. Requiem eternam donai deis domine. Stay! You Let that bear the course and set it down. What black magician conjures up this fiend to stop devoted charitable deeds? Villain, set down the course. Oh, by St. Paul, I'll make a course of him that disobeys. You tremble. Are you all afraid? Alas, I blame you not, for you are mortal, and mortal eyes cannot endure the devil. <laughs> oh, sweet saint, for charity be not so cursed. Oh, devil, for God's sake, henson, trouble us not. If thou delightst to view thy heinous deeds, behold this pattern of thy butcheries. Oh, gentlemen, see, see, dead Henry's wounds open their congealed mouths and bleed afresh. 
Thy deed, inhuman and unnatural, provokes this deluge most unnatural. A lady, you know no rules of charity, which renders good for bad, blessings for curses. Villain, thou knowst no law of God nor man. No beast so fierce but knows some touch of pity. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant ye. Must grant me, hedgehog. Then God grant me too, thou mayst be damned for that wicked deed. Oh, he was gentle, mild, and virtuous. A fitter for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven. But thou shalt never come, and thou unfit for any place but hell. Yes, one place else, if you will hear me name it. Some dungeon? Your bedchamber. You'll rest betide the chamber where thou liest. Go with it, lady, till I lie with you. I hope so. I know so. But, gentle Lady Anne, is not the causer of the timeless deaths of these Plantagenets, Henry and Edward, as blameful as the executioner? Thou art the cause, and most accursed effect. Your beauty was the cause of that effect. Your beauty, which did haunt me in my sleep to undertake the death of all the world, so I might rest one hour in your sweet bosom. It is a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged on him that loveth you. It is a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that slew my husband. He that bereft thee, lady, of thy husband did it to help thee to a better husband. Where is he? Here. What does that speak to me? Would it were mortal poison for thy sake? You came poison from so sweet a place. Out of my sight, thou dost infect my eyes. Your eyes, sweet lady, have infected mine. Would they were basilisks to strike me dead. And the eyes of thine from mine have drawn salt tears. Shame that aspect with store of childish drops. These eyes, which never shed remorseful tear. No, when my brothers George and Edward wept to hear the piteous moan that Rutland made when black-faced Clifford shook his sword at him. My manly eyes did scorn and humble tear. And what these sorrows could not thence exhale, thy beauty, huh? Made them blind with weeping. <laughs> Thy revengeful heart cannot forgive. Lo, here I lend thee the sharp pointed sword, which if thou please to hide in this true bosom, I lay it naked to the deadly stroke, and humbly beg the death upon my knee. Nay, do not pause. It was I that killed your husband, but twas thy beauty that provoked me. Nay, now dispatch! It was I that killed King Henry, but it was thy heavenly face that set me on. <laughs> take the sword up again! Oh, take up me. Arise, dissembler. Though I wish thy death, I will not be thy executioner. Let me kill myself and I will do it. I have already. That was in thy rage. Speak it again, and even with the word, that hand which for thy love did kill thy love, shall for thy love kill a far truer love. I would I knew thy heart. It is figured in my tongue. I fear me both are false. Then never was man true. Well, well. Put up thy sword. Say then my peace is made. That shall you know hereafter. But shall I live in hope? All men, I hope. Live so. Vouch safe to wear this ring? To take is not to give. Look. How this ring encompasses thy finger. Even so thy breast encloseth my poor heart. Wear both of them. For both of them are thine. And if thy poor devoted suppliant may but beg one favor at thy gracious hand, thou dost confirm his happiness forever? What is it? That it would please thee leave these sad designs to him that hath more cause to be a mourner. And after I have solemnly interred at Chertsey Monastery this noble king, and wet his grave with my repentant tears, I will with all expedient duty see you. Grant me this boon, 
with all my heart. And much it joys me, too, to see you all become so penitent. Tressel and Barclay go along with me. Sirs, take up the course. 